Croeso i Gair Dydd, Cartref Artes Mundi. Welcome to Cardiff, Wales, home to Artes Mundi. Fel un o'r prif sefydliadau i'r celfyddydau goledol yng Nghymru ac iddo ffocws rhyngwladol, mae Artes Mundi yn ceisio creu cyfleoedd unigryw i unigolion a chymunedau ymgysylltu'n greadigol a materion bres ein hoes, mewn ffyrdd sy'n taro deuddeg unig gyd. Rydym yn ymryw medig i ysgogi deolog a thrafodaethau yn rhyngwladol ac yn lleol, sy'n dasblygu deallwyroedd helaethach yn gilydd, o bobl eraill, a'r berthynas rhwng diwylliannau cyfarwydd a fell. As the key internationally focused visual arts flagship organisation in Wales, Artis Mundi seeks to generate unique opportunities for individuals and communities to engage creatively with the urgent issues of our time in ways which resonate with us all. We are committed to stimulating dialogue and debates internationally and locally, that develop greater understanding of ourselves, of others, and the relations between familiar and distant cultures. Cyflwynir yn nawfed rhy fyn o arddangosfa eilfwydd ar tesmyndi, a'i gwabwyr cysylltiadig eleni mewn tair cynolfan ar draws y ddinas. Ein partneriaid yn amgueddfa genedlaethol Cerdydd, Chapter, a G39. The ninth edition of the biannual exhibition and associated Artesmyndi 9 prize is presented this year in three venues across the city. Our partners at National Museum Cardiff, Chapter and G39. Shemai. Hello everybody. I'm Nigel Prince, the director of Artist Mundi. Welcome to this event in celebration of the announcement for the Artist Mundi 9 prize winner. To begin with, we want to start with some short introductory videos for each of the shortlisted artists. We begin with New York-based artist Firile Baez. So much of the work starts with water, starts with these massive pores, that one um, portrait of the Siguapa diving into this massive wave. It's a lot of water that responds to the environment. A lot of times in the figuration will be determined by how the water, how dry the air is, how the tilt of the floor, how things settle abstractly and then get concretized into figuration. The story of the Siguapa, for instance, has a variation depending on where you are and where I'm from. So she's either the most beautiful or the most grotesque. And she's described as having this beautiful mane of hair. And as an artist, that gives me room to either make it a silky blowout, the most lassitude of Asian hair, or to have it vertical and kinky. So this access point to reframe what we think of as beautiful and what we think of as deserving of space. So take up all the space that they need in, in the composition. There's so much Caribbean theory that talks about the sea, the ocean, as not a boundary line, but an interconnection. The geography of an island itself being so informative of how you think of yourself, but also how you traverse the world around you. So even if you're someone who grew up in an island and you live the rest of your life in a landlocked space, there is a psychology that helps you navigate the world differently. I was thinking um, a lot about Gordon's scars. Gordon, the enslaved man who had been beaten um, and he has those scars that are almost like um, like waves or, or mountainscapes on his back. And while I was uh, on the ocean, I was thinking a lot about his scars and uh, trying to draw them and then also drawing the, the water. So somehow thinking um, about slavery, the memory of it, uh, the scars, but also what water does as well, the, the soothing element of it and the rocking uh, when you're in a boat for, for two weeks and you just rocking the whole time when you're being cradled the whole time and held. Uh, what is that in combination with the, um, the memory of people who had uh, different experiences of crossing water? I'm from uh, Limpopo, uh, which is a landlocked uh, area in, uh, in South Africa. Uh, so the ocean is a bit far, but the rivers, uh, they're many. So that's uh, part of the genesis of the work, considering water, considering land, considering uh, trauma, considering wounding, considering sound, the sound of water, the sound of the earth, 
the sound of what's remembered and what's forgotten, remembering oneself with the, the primal elements as well, remembering a story with the, the primal elements and the effect of the primal elements on the story, and whether those elements are also witnesses to, uh, to our everyday and also to our past as well, and of course, the futures. Ethics and aesthetic is never the same. They overlap at one point, but they're not they're a different system. So I have to find the where the place where they overlap. And if these two things meet together in nice way, then artwork happens. Otherwise, uh, it's it's failure. I think <laughs> as we grow up uh, in Japan, when our grandfather was still around. We never talked about the war. We, didn't, we never asked our grandfather, so what did you do in China? You know, they, they were all sent to China or Southeast Asia or Korea or wherever. But we never asked them these questions. But in the air, we could feel that, you know, something is repressed all the time. So guilt is there. Like the, in the society, we could feel the guilt as a child. And we could feel that guilt and the fact that we were cruel. This fact was repressed and we could feel that. But once, you know, our grandfather started to pass away, this guilt has been disappeared. So this is really the last moment that I can really make work like this. I had in my mind that there wasn't this idea of making a character, but there was this idea of like making individuals, like how I see these uh, people as a character, this uh, object as a character, or any uh, like story, like some of the stories which I really uh, liked, you know, from my hometown, different people, like, and to be able to uh, engage with their own uh, oral stories and uh, engage with their own proverbs or methods or sayings. It was quite tough in initially to for me to engage uh, into art. Uh, I grown up in a, uh, Sast a place called Sasti, coal miners town, and also the farmers town. I was not able to you know like learn about formal education about art. One of my mentor, one of my first mentor, Manoj Bobde, he introduced me to many things, not just like uh, making art, but also like uh, have this open aspect to read like uh, literature, uh, like especially Marathi literature and Marathi writers and uh, poetry. To be able to get into art was kind of a journey. I, I finished my master's in uh, MS University in Baroda. So when I went to Baroda, everything changed for me. I, like, politically, socially, like how I see things, like and how, how would I show things through my art. Every moment I try to reconsider what the camera does as a social object, what kinds of relations it makes possible. I think about it in a really, really basic level when you have a camera or even an audio recorder. It's a way of saying I am paying attention in a different way of delineating or, or demarcating and proposing a different kind of relationship than the one you already have with that person. I realized that a lot of the films that are in the show at Artes Mundi don't actually have that many people. They're less about the relation and more about different ways of seeing. But actually that's not common across my work. Most of my work comes out of an encounter with a person and a trying to pay attention to a way of thinking and being of that person. I related to this idea of the encounter using recording devices or the questions that a camera can bring like who looks where does the image circulate what kinds of meanings does it accrue what does it mean to the people that you are filming and what does it mean once it circulates you have to realize that most people in the caribbean have been mostly subjects of the camera but the work that is made is not directed at us. We're not supposed to be the viewers, you know? This is something that's always in my mind, you know? I'm, I'm the primary audience for the work I make is the people that you first see in the films themselves. And I'm thinking of the films as something that I am making with them and for them. 
because they are also ways of thinking together, be in the present of like whoever lives in this land in the future, these images and, and these people will still be there with them. I started my career really looking at and organizing around what other artists had done. And I spent a lot of time traveling around the country, doing interviews with other artists. Um, first of all, finding those artists, then doing interviews with them, then developing my own collection of slides um, around their work, and then doing a whole series of conversations and lectures to anybody who would listen, classes and so forth, to anybody who would listen, to any student that was brave enough to take my class, or to my professors who were, you know, uh, brave enough to allow me to have, you know, like a microphone and a slide projector. Um, really talking about the work that had been made and really digging for that work. And that was really um, a lot of the effort and time around with my sort of initial um, uh, advance into the world of representation and photography in particular. This idea then of working with representational images, at this point, I'm really battling with this idea. Of course, you know, I'm an image maker, and at the same time, trying to figure out how to build a work that has a, a certain kind of voicing and a certain underpinning that will hopefully disabuse the possibility of it being dismantled in a way that is destructive to what's being offered. The primary question around voicing and making, being an, a, an artist with a certain kind of imagination and a certain kind of musician, is to build the work that I absolutely need to see for myself. Welcome back, everybody. I hope those previews whetted your appetite for an in-person visit to the exhibition, which runs throughout the summer months until September. We now move on to the main event. The jury for Artist Monday 9 comprises three individuals. Cosmin Constinas, the director of Parasite in Hong Kong, Elvira, Diane Garniose, Director of Showroom Gallery in London, and Rachel Kent, who's the Chief Curator at MCA Sydney, Australia. At their recent meeting, the jurors reached the unanimous decision through intense discussion that the Artist Monday Nine Prize should be awarded equally to all six artists. We're delighted to embrace and celebrate that decision. Earlier today, I had a video call with the three jurors. We'll now cut to a series of short extracts from that conversation where they shed light on their decision-making process and the discussions that ensued. I think we all recognise this is a time of great social change, economic upheaval. So as a jury, we reached a collective and unanimous decision to award the Artis Mundi Prize to all six participants this year. Uh, we've done this for a couple of reasons, really. I mean, first of all, in recognition of the context in which all of the artists are producing their work, but also to acknowledge each individual practice because they're outstanding in merit. They've been made especially for this exhibition under great constraints, and we felt they're powerfully relevant today. I think that this decision is not entirely unprecedented nor groundbreaking in the sense that uh, artists uh, and juries uh, across several other awards in the past few years have um, stood up against um, the idea of awards and, and what of, of, of awards in the art uh, world and um, their celebration of competition and individualism and hierarchies. Um, but I hope that this decision will um, help as much as possible to bring uh, an, an end to this understanding of, um, of um, grants and awards uh, as fostering something that art should be completely against. Art should be uh, about, uh, should, should stand for everything that is in opposition to competition and uh, hierarchies and uh, individualism. Um, understood in this way. Uh, so um, we hope that this is a contribution to 
a broader conversation. But at the same time, as Rachel said, this is also a very personal acknowledgement of the incredible work um, and uh, contribution and sacrifices that um, the six artists have um, all demonstrated in a accumulated many decades of, of, of work uh, together. Well, I, uh, I mean, I echo what my uh, fellow jurors had, um, had mentioned, the times and the particular decision, as you say, um, the contribution of this incredible artist to their not only um, con context, immediate context, but also laterally to the art world. And I would also praise the, the, the particularities of Artist Mundi that make possible through exhibition making the presentation of a finalist that in a way our decision as a jury was taken before all the exhibition happens with the, the celebration of the six artists and the complexity that they bring all together in dialogue with the different aspects of their practices to, to or they could bring to the, to the city of Cardiff, no? And I think exhibition making in this way and, and also offered the public to engage with it, to, to also make their own interpretation and experience of the world is crucial uh, for our decision. And I think that was uh, very critical. I mean, I, I think uh, Cosme uh, is right in highlighting the fact that art should be looking at other aspects of what it means to produce um, experiences about uh, the day and now about revision in history, about talking about socio-political issues that are perhaps uh, complex um, and more difficult to um, to engage with in other instances. No? And I think it's important to add to another dimension to our conversation, you know, as jurors is that all of these six artists represent something very different and very unique. I mean, you know, different regions, different media, different kinds of practice, also different career points. You have very, very senior artists who've been working for many decades, as well as artists in earlier career stages within this selection. So again, to try and compare, contrast, select one person for acknowledgement is almost arbitrary, makes a lot more sense to recognise the totality of those practices and how they converse with one another. Congratulations to Firole, Dineo, Beatrice, Miro, Prabhaka and Carrie. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank funders, supporters, partners and colleagues who've made the ninth edition of Artist Monday such a great success. We look forward to continuing to work with them into the future as we look ahead to Artist Monday 10. For now, please visit our website where you can find out further information regarding the exhibition, the public program and future events and activities. And we look forward to welcoming you in person to Cardiff to the exhibition very soon. Until then, goodbye.